Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, we are back. Welcome to June 1st. Uh, does it feel like the year is... <laughs> the beginning oh. of the rest of the year. Yeah, the I know. I was just half. thinking about that. Let's make it good. Right, exactly. So here's an interesting idea for you guys. We shared this with you on yesterday's Sunday special podcast, which we didn't realize we'd actually talked for two hours straight. Yeah. If you guys haven't listened to that podcast, you ought to do it. We talked about a ton of things. And one of the things that the the recurring and overarching goal of yesterday's show, if there was a goal, was to talk about goals was to talk about thinking big, was to talk about basically looking at the second half of this year as, in essence, uh, the end of the great pause, which I've heard other people using that term. I love it. You know, the end of the great malaise, you know. And look, the next six months, it's definitely going to feel, you know, for a lot of people, it's going to feel joyous. It's going to feel like a big relief. We have been sensing that and you've been sensing that. Everyone's sort of looking forward to going back to something that feels uh, at least has some re- remote resemblance to being normal. And look, your buyers and your sellers are going to feel like that. The real estate markets, as we predicted and as we've been reporting, are absolutely on fire. Across the country, we're hearing nothing but great news about you guys taking listings and the listings going on contract really quick and all these other wonderful things that are happening. Um, and you know, do everything in your power to make sure you're part of this return of the real estate boom because there's a very good chance that it's not going to last but maybe through the end of the year. And look, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, you know, maybe we're wrong and maybe there's going to be some other unexpected, miraculous thing that's going to happen in the economy that's going to be completely, um, you know, unpredictable. And it's going to be uh, uh, the year of miracles opposed to the year of the, you know, the pandemic. And that's certainly what we're hoping. That's what Julie and I have been convincing ourselves of anyway, is that this is going to be remembered as the year of miracles, the miracle that maybe they discover a vaccine, the year of miracles, maybe the second half of the, you know, uh, year economically is a thousand times better than had it been even with the first six months not being a big, you know, weird time. Maybe, who knows, right? Everything in, is possible at this point. And so think optimistically about what's ahead and act even bolder. Julie? Yes, absolutely. And one of the lead stories I think all of you should be talking about, and this is a headline from Housing Wire is the fact that you put a house on the market right now, it is going to sell. You are probably going to have multiple offers. And here's some specifics on that that you can talk about, especially if we have some sellers that are on the fence deciding now or later. Uh, It is estimated that we are currently about 3.8 million homes short to start the year in 2020, and that was before COVID. That was before COVID. Okay, so that of course has been exacerbated by even lower uh, inventory. For example, in San Diego, single-family home inventory dropped to a 1.6 month supply, and is 38.5 percent down from the prior year. So, absolutely, now is. I mean, you know, we joke about agents saying it's a great time to sell, but in fact, it is a great time to sell. <laughs> right, and we're not lying. We're not making it up. Because especially in the in the moderate and lower price ranges, bidding wars, you know, if it's priced right and you've got comps to support it and it's staged reasonably well. And a lot of agents are getting out there and doing open houses now. One of my coaching clients um, from this morning did two, you know, her most recent live open houses and got a listing appointment for to this evening from doing that. So you got to take action. You got to take action big, massive action right now. And take advantage of the fact that there is low inventory. So anybody that's planning on selling this year or even next year, this is probably the best time to do it. So uh, then I have another uh, very important article. I need to pull this up. Sorry for the no problem. Here. If you don't have, if, if you right now are sort of restarting your year and you don't have any momentum, the easiest way for you to get the momentum is putting yourself in a mindset of just massive uh, lead attraction, basically. And we created the 90-day massive action plan for you just to do exactly that. Gives you exact day-by-day 
um, this is what you do today, this is what you do tomorrow, and, and if you follow that massive action plan, you're going to have more momentum than probably you have ever experienced before. So I strongly encourage all of you to download or actually join the free coaching program. And just to be clear, it's a smidge of our normal coaching program, but it's enough to get you guys started and help you build momentum. We launched this program at the start of the pandemic because we knew so many of you guys were going to need immediate and urgent help. And I'm thrilled to see, I don't know, thousands of agents from around the country have joined the free coaching program. If you'd like to be part of the free coaching program where you can download the real estate treasure map or fill in the blank business plan, where you can... Uh, absolutely uh, get access to the 90-day massive action plan and also our ultimate agent survival guide it, where we had essentially created its three parts the first part is called personal the second part is called um, protect and the third part is called profit and this is a working document we're always updating this but what we're trying to do is we're trying to basically create a path forward for you if you've not act, uh, implemented the um, the personal aspect of the ultimate agent survival guide that's where we tell you how to get the PPP loan that's where we tell you how to put your mortgage in forbearance that's how we tell you to be better financially prepared and all those things so if you've not done that yet you need to text the word survival to 31996 text the word survival to 31996 and when you do we're going to text you back a link and that link is the join link you click the link you set up your username and password for the free coaching program and you go ahead and log right in and when you do then you're going to be given all this information I've just told you it is free there's no obligation you're also going to be by the way uh, have access to the daily semi-private coaching call with head coach Julie so take action on this urgently text the word survival to 31996 Yes, and one of the things we're going to be talking about in Premier Coaching today is this very new thing. Fannie Mae has issued a lender letter about the requirements for self-employment income. This was predicted early on in the pandemic that they were going to be tightening up on particular types of businesses, self-employed being one of the more obvious ones. And remember that 98% of small business... This is for the PPP. You know, this, no, this is this is even for, for loans. This is oh, for loans. Okay. okay. So this is a Fannie Mae thing. And remember that lenders, even if they are not required to follow Fannie Mae guidelines, it is looked at as the standard by which you are supposed to operate. Right. So for example, Fannie Mae issued a letter on Wednesday with additional requirements of borrowers who are self-employed. So we're going. I've uh, asked Tom to, to put this into our updates for all of our pandemic pl planning so they know how to handle this, but we're also going to get into the weeds a little bit with coaching on this. So, quote, income from a business that has been negatively impacted by changing conditions is not necessarily ineligible for use in qualifying the borrower, uh, the letter said. However, the lender is required now to determine if the borrower's income is, quote, stable and has a reasonable expectation of continuance. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, uh, lenders are now required to obtain the following documentation to see if self-employment income meets Fannie Mae requirements. An audited year-to-date profit and loss statement reporting business revenue, expenses, and net income up to and including the most recent month preceding the loan application date. I won't go into much more detail than that, but uh, an audited year-to-date P&L and two of the most recent depository account statements to support and or not conflict with conflict with the information presented in the current year-to-date profit and loss. So basically, they don't want you to use just like, let's say you have a client and their business was really healthy January and February, then it hit the fan for March, April, and May. And you know the lenders now are saying, well, we're not gonna just qualify you off of what you used to be doing. You've gotta prove that your business is back up and running at least to the point where we can use it to qualify for income. So this is going to throw a wrench into some of your clients who are self-employed, they own their own businesses, they're going to have to do more documentation. Now, it says specifically that it doesn't necessarily make them ineligible because they had pandemic issues. It just means that they have to document the daylights out of what their current income is right up to just about the day before closing. And we've, so Julie, there's great. another great article you found that was um, proving out. I think it's the one, it's the one right there. With That's the lady right. in the reef, yeah. If you can click that one, <clears throat> the gist of it is, is and you guys, uh, if you remember, was a couple months ago, we told you that we expected there was going to be a whole slew of this VRBO type uh, properties that were going to come for sale. And sure enough, they're coming for sale. And there's some people that had actually formed pretty sizable businesses buying VRBO properties because you can, you know, obviously if you buy the right property at the right price in the right market, you can clean up on those things. Well, all those properties now, um, especially the ones that had lots of mortgages are all hitting the market. That is an absolutely killer source of listing leads for all of you. Again, this is something you need to incorporate into your um, massive action plan. 
absolutely positively going after listing leads right now is the primary focus of everybody who expects to basically make it through this next phase of this real estate correction. So do become a powerful listing agent. Don't wait any longer to become a powerful listing agent. Now, something else I want to warn a lot of you of is I get texts and emails from you guys a lot about created creative <laughs> creativity. Some of you will ask me to give you my opinion on this or my opinion on that. And so for all of you who are thinking about asking me about creative ideas and websites and lead generation things and social networking and all that stuff, all that stuff has a place, but it doesn't have a place now. If you want to make it through this market so that you don't go broke, basically, so you can be in a position to help as many people as you can, you have to set the creativity aside. Right now is the time where you have to be on the offense. You have to be going after the market right now and sitting behind a computer and trying to be creative or you know wasting time trying to learn something that's going to be a passive lead generator for you. It's going to take too long. You don't have time. Realistically, guys, we have, what, seven months left this year, effectively. In the seven months that we have left this year, you're not really going to be selling much in December and November. And the market almost always drops off right after Halloween. So realistically, we don't have seven months left. We have maybe, if we're lucky, four months left. Now, if you take out the, uh, let's just assume there's no uncertainty. Let's assume there's no, you know, forced quarantines and nothing draconian happens. But in the four months you have left, how many of those actually are going to be work days for you? You should, and this is what we have our coaching clients do, go and take a calendar and commit to how many days you're going to be working the rest of this year. Put a big, you know, gold star or red star in your calendar, how many of the, what your actual working days are going to be. And on those actual working days, you need to make a list of five things you're going to do every single day to essentially keep yourself in proactive lead generation mode. And if you don't, if you aren't that drilled down right now, what's going to happen is this four months is going to fly by. Julie? Yes, absolutely. So we were talking about different opportunities and things that you should be monitoring. Um, here's a headline from CNBC. Short-term rental market faces consolidation as startups and small landlords offload properties. So what does that mean? Consolidation is hitting the market for short-term home rentals as the coronavirus pandemic has curtailed travel dramatically this year. Small landlords and venture-backed companies that collected properties to rent out as short-term vacation rentals are offloading them in an effort to cut their losses. Meanwhile, large property owners and managers are seeing opportunities to expand as desperate sellers and landlords seek new business. So basically, the consolidation is a lot of the smaller um, VRBO owners are not getting their income. They've got lots of examples in this article, especially people who are in markets where most of their business was in the spring and summer, and it's not a viable business anymore. So they're selling them. Now, who's buying them? Some of the bigger companies right. that are collecting those. So you're selling you know, a small VRBO owner to a big potential VRB owner. The other thing that I've been seeing, and I think you've got some examples of this too, Tim, um, are that some of these secondary markets, the, um, you know, the home away, the VRBO, Airbnb owners, those properties are selling as primary residences as well, because A, there's low inventory and B, people are fleeing the cities to get, you know, a little bit different lifestyle. So the point is VRBO stuff, people are selling it. They are. And right now has never been a better time to go after some of the you know more traditional sources of listing leads too. These are the things we teach you guys how to do in our coaching program. But again, please just focus on doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level right now and really drill down for the next four months. All right. So there are obviously a lot. Again, this is something was 60 days ago. Julie and I told you guys there was going to be social unrest. We told you that there was going to be, we literally said riots. Why was that so predictable? Because that happens every time <laughs> after something that's, I mean, we are from Columbus, Ohio, and after virtually every OSU football game, <laughs> they would- Win, they, loss, or tie. Win, <laughs> loss, or tie, they would riot. So the yeah. moral of the story is people don't really need much of an excuse to, no. you know, riot in essence. Well, and you know, if we're being honest, we've all been asked to behave ourselves for a good 90 day stretch right. here. And I think a lot of people are reaching their limit on that. Um, they were starting to get out anyway, and then, you know, it takes a catalyst and then they snap. So, you know, this has been coming up on coaching calls and my, my general, um, I think you agree with us, you know, we always coach them to be media free as much as possible uh, with the exception of the stuff that we try to bring in the podcast that applies to you, like mortgage, uh, items that are going to affect your actual deals, for example, but regarding all of this whole civil unrest, um, you know, if it doesn't affect you, your family, your listings, your buyers, 
drill down, take care of your own self, put on your own oxygen mask first, your job. And I've had some really interesting coaching calls about this where, you know, people don't really want to do a longer, uh, like a, a yearly plan. They want a 30 or a 90 day plan that is very focused on, of course, listings, but literally how many pendings can they put on the board between now and maybe 90 days from now. And I think that's a really good drill down goal that keeps your nose to the grindstone, keeps you on the phone, finding out who you can help and maybe touching some spokes, you know, some income spokes that you wouldn't normally have reached out to like the Airbnb crowd, um, maybe probate and certainly all of your normal stuff. The thing that I am fearful of are these guys are going to take too long to get started and the year is going to be a complete wash. Right. And there's a lot of uncertainty over third and fourth quarter. So we keep on saying the same thing, make hay while the sun shines. And we mean that. There's tons of opportunity. How many of you guys have examples of whatever you put on the market last week? It's already pending. That's right. Almost all of you. Right. Now, if look, if you are not, if, if becoming a proactive lead generator is a bridge too far for you to cross right now, you still do not have an excuse to waste time. So if, if that is the case, one of the things you can start doing is all the things we teach you in the coaching program to generate buyer leads for free. Don't succumb to paying for leads. Don't succumb to, again, the whole creative thing. The point of that is, is that you can do those creative things if you choose to do them in fourth quarter. But most of the creative things, the building of your CRM and the drip campaigns and all these other things, they are they do not generate enough business to be worthwhile doing in the best of markets, let alone a market like this. So what we strongly encourage all of you to do is be okay being uncomfortable, but please stop waiting to take action doing the right thing. We're doing it in our coaching business. We're telling every, all of our friends, not even in folks in real estate, that you know be on the offense right now. Everyone who will listen, because that's the move to make. That's the only way. You can build any kind of, you know, a defense against the uncertainty that we're probably all going to be experiencing going into 2021. It's inevitable this year at the end of the year, especially in fourth quarter, is going to be, you know, crazy It'll town. It'll be weird one way or the other. It's crazy town in fourth it quarter. Is. Well, you have the election. You have the... <laughs> I know. I mean, but yeah, don't worry about that now. Don't think about that now. And whatever you do, do not waste time now. Uh, all these distractions, and because it's an election year, you're going to see and hear more distractions. Are the riots? Are you know what's the story with the riots? Are they really politically motivated, or is there some sort Just of big conspiracy it. behind yeah. it? Blah, 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 blah. Stay out of it. It does not. It absolutely, positively, it does not help you to have a mindset that's going to put you in a place to um, help people and make money. And that's what you have to do right now. If you really need to scare yourself into doing what you don't want to do and you don't want to do at the highest level. What's it going to feel like for you come Christmas this year, the end of the year, when you don't have the money basically to spoil your family, let alone buy them any presents, when you are worried about how to buy food, when you are worried about how to make a house payment, when you are essentially on your heels financially, how is that going to feel, especially over the holidays? That's going to be awful. So do everything you can to avoid that situation in your life. I'm not wishing it upon yep. any of you, but ultimately it's up to you individually to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Jules? Yeah. Set a goal of how many pendings you're going to have and then add 20% to it. Yeah. So uh, I've got to get to, P- uh, to Premiere soon, but things that I hate and things I like. Things I hate because it's extra weird. <laughs> Headlines I never thought I'd read. Monkeys steal coronavirus blood samples I in saw India. That. A troop of monkeys, yes, there are real troops of monkeys that randomly go around in India, attacked a medical official and snatched away blood samples of patients who had tested positive. So they're not sure where all that blood ended up, but it's something they're tracking. So that's the thing that I hate. Thing that I loved was absolutely the SpaceX uh, launch over the weekend because it was absolute perfection. It was such an incredible example especially amid all of the chaos in the, in the world. Such a, a, just an amazing example of, it was perfectly engineered every single stage that they went through. And there was quite a lot. You should all watch it. Uh, NASA's got a Facebook uh, page where they have those videos and you can also watch it on YouTube. It was just incredible that humans know how to do that. <laughs> and they did it well. And I really admire the astronauts for just being completely... Um, and it goes to training, right? It goes to experience. They were calm, cool, and collected. And they the, had a nap. At the same time, we can't defend ourselves from a troop of monkeys. Exactly. Like, 
Okay. More 2020 for you. All right. I've got to go to my premiere call. So listen, guys, if you need us for anything, uh, you know, obviously you could text me anytime, especially if you want to talk about EXP. Text uh, 512-758-0206. Thank you for continuing to make this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents, probably in the nation, but maybe in the world. It's pretty exciting to see that we're uh, approaching, I think it's 8 million downloads in the last recording uh, reporting area or reporting period, I guess is what it's called. And that's kind of shocking. It's kind of cool, especially when you consider how many of you are listening to us every single day. Thank you for um, continuing to have us be part of your lives. We sincerely appreciate it. You got to understand no matter what happens next, we're all going to get through this together. That's not just something somebody says. It's I'm saying that with utmost confidence. When Julie and I see that there's going to be a turn in the road that you need to know about, we're going to tell you. When we see there's an opportunity that you can be, say, for example, pivoting towards focusing on this aspect of real estate, we're going to tell you. And we're going to probably tell you months before anybody else uh, is going to tell you because most people are just uh, essentially they only look one step ahead because they're too busy worrying about monkeys attacking them or whatever, right? So as the market starts to adjust, as the market starts to shift, and right now it's shifting for the better, thankfully. We're going to tell you and we're going to you know, essentially beg and <laughs> plead and threaten and do everything it poss we possibly can do to get you to make the most of the market. And when we see the market shifting, we're going to give you plenty of heads, head up, heads up warning. If we think the market's going to be uh, a, you know, distressed, for example, if we think that's going to be an opportunity for all of you in 2021, we're going to tell you. And trust me, we're monitoring that. When we see that there's going to be maybe more opportunities with you know these VRBO rentals or these different things that we've been reporting on, we're going to tell you not just about the opportunity, but in the coaching program, we're going to tell you how to seize that opportunity. It's up to you to make the to take the action. We'll help you get your fire started. We will probably also help you to keep your fire started. That's the reason we do this podcast live every single day. But ultimately, if you want to build your fire to a big bonfire, that's going to be on you. There's only so much we can do. Even if you are a private coaching client, at some point, you've got to basically be willing to make yourself uncomfortable or put it in another way, do what you don't want to do and you don't want to do it at the highest level. But our sincere thanks for continuing to make this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents. If you guys want to um, have a, uh, we're getting great continued five star reviews about our book on Amazon. And if Barnes and Noble, Noble ever opens up again, you could get it at Barnes and Noble too. But the book is called Harris Rules. If you've not um, purchased that book yet, it is uh, again something that we uh, released actually this month last year. That's when it was finally done. It took us about two years, a year and a half maybe, uh, to write the book. And it's something we're extremely proud of. I'd love for you to purchase the book and uh, let us know what you think about it. I think it's for, if based on the feedback, it's maybe what exactly what all of you have been looking for. So the book is on Amazon. It's called Harris Rules. In the meantime, if you need us for anything, um, you can feel free to text me directly at 512-758-0206. Or remember, if you're not part of the free coaching program, make sure you text the word survival to 31996. God bless and have a fantastic day. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.